Scotty Nell Hughes on the line with us. Uh, Scotty is, uh, let's see here, a chief political correspondent at USA Radio Networks. USARadioNetworks.com is the website, and you can tweet her at Scotty N. Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S, S-C-O-T-T-I-E-N-H-U-G-S. Hey, Scotty, how you doing? Happy Monday. It's the day before Super Tuesday Part 3. Indeed. And I think, I think we're all very excited for Wednesday morning to finally get here. As there seems to be lots of things firing up on both sides of the aisle for all of our candidates today. I agree. I agree. I think it's going to be a fascinating time tomorrow. Um, Scotty, I, th- I think the last time we talked, you said that you were supporting Donald Trump. Do I have that right? You are right. I'm an official Trump surrogate, so I do get to speak on him. But I think this is one issue where I think you and I might be able to honestly agree about. And that comes to your, you're a very strong constitutionalist. You're one of the strongest, actually, I know on the other side of the aisle that believe in protecting constitutional rights, the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Uh, am, I, am I correct in this? Right. So how is shutting down a protester protecting the right of free speech? Well, I'm talking about Friday night, shutting down a rally is, is, is hurting free speech. Oh, the government did not shut down the rally. The, the First Amendment protects you against government interference in your right of free speech. And Donald Trump pulled the plug on that rally. And he said at the time he did it at the advice of the, of the police department. The police department has come out and said we never advised him to do that. So, so Donald Trump it. pulled his own plug. Well, he did pull his own plug, but he had a device of security. It was not just he did his device of law enforcement, which includes... There are right. several agencies right now, including Secret Service, which is of the government. You're right. He did pull his own plug for the idea of security. But what we saw was after MoveOn.org celebrating, saying that they won. They were the ones that shut down Donald Trump. They were the ones that silenced Donald Trump, a.k.a. they were excited that they Wait a minute, Scotty, we're, 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 you know, I, I follow uh, MoveOn.org. I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm a member of MoveOn.org. I never saw anything. I never got anything from them saying that. Oh, go look at their notes. Go look at their website. They're, they actually fundraised They're, off of shutting down the, the rally Friday night. Huh, and then interesting. And this as a notice. Yeah, so go look and see what they've done. Now, I will say this about Republicans. MoveOn.org, which George Soros and the Soros Foundation is one of the main funders of it, also is funding a Republican candidate, as we're finding out, with John Kasich. Governor Kasich out of Ohio, the Soros Foundation, with his sixth largest donation this presidential campaign season, donating more than $200,000 according to OpenSecret.org. Hmm. So it looks like there might be some collaboration right now uh, between both. If you want to talk about unifying, well, at least those sides are unified against one guy, and that would be Donald Trump and suffocating the First Amendment rights of those who support him. Fascinating. So what, what do you find appealing about Trump? Is it when he calls women pigs? <laughs> now, let's talk about this. You have to admit that Mr. Trump, you cannot believe that he is sexist. You cannot believe that he is racist. Nobody has yet. Actually, I believe both. Well, what has Mr. Trump said that is racist, Tom? Louise, Louise said she just checked Move On site, and she said they're not claiming credit for shutting down the. the, the oh, uh, I go go look again. I'll send you all their stuff. I've been reading it all morning. Okay. Um. um so but anyhow, I know, you know back to back to Donald Trump is. Uh, I'm I'm curious why you are supporting him. I am supporting him because when it comes down to it, I believe that we need to definitely challenge the status quo of government that has given us $19 trillion of debt, that the Republican Party has become run by establishment folks and have become bullies to the actual movement of the people they say that they represent. Well, then why aren't you supporting Bernie Sanders or, or even arguably Hillary Clinton? Well, let me back it up because I think the Democrats have the same problem. And the difference between Bernie Sanders... And Donald Trump, is there's a lot that they have between them, it's how you pay for it. Bernie Sanders has literally pipe dreams about how you're going to be able to pay for free education for folks. He wants the government to pay for it. Mr. Trump wants to give the tools for the people to pay for it themselves. Okay, so what tool, what tool will, will my kids who are in their 30s, and actually uh, one of our kids is, well, I don't want to get too personal here, but you know, <laughs> if one of my kids wanted to adopt or give birth to a child, what tool are you suggesting that child, my, you know, one of my kids, in, who's about your age, actually, uh, is, is going to get to, uh, to help get universal pre-K? Uh, well, who says that we need universal pre-K? Why, why do we need that right there? Why is that? That is not our right. That is not something that we are guaranteed upon birth as United citizens. It's nice for some, especially those of, of us who are working parents and have to pay for it, but they are not guaranteed that they have to have universal pre-K. So well, I'm not talking more. about a constitutional right here. What, what I'm suggesting is that one of the purposes of government is to do what's best for all the people. And one of the things that we know, if you want to invest in America and make America great, 
is that those first five years of life are the most critical years of life. And for, and for many kids, um, where mom has a bunch of kids or is working, both mom and dad are working, or there's no dad, whatever, um, universal pre-K is the thing that gives us, I mean, we're 27th in the world in terms of education, and part of it is that we're one of the few industrialized countries in the world that doesn't actually invest in its children. Now, I get it, you know, Republicans want to make sure that there's lots of children, they want to make abortion illegal, but once babies are born, they say, hey, screw you, unless you're rich. Uh, you know, what are the tools that Donald Trump is going to give to poor women who are trying to raise kids and don't have the time to be home all day? So, well, here's the question for you. I mean, why should we sit there and take one more well, one more year making it almost mandatory that they spend in a public school system rather than at home with their family, Tom? I mean, they're already starting out at five years old so, as it is. And we're gonna, I mean, why, t- why sit there and force my child at four years old to go to universal pre-K? Because that, 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 more I'm not, I'm not talking about forcing, Scotty. I'm not talking about forcing anybody. Okay. It in. But what Trump is going to do is bring those jobs back. Okay, hang on. Just You're a second, listening Scott. to the Tom Hartman program. Call 202 536 2370. You can read all about it over at scottynellhughes.com and you can tweet Scotty at Scotty T I E S C O T T I E N Hughes. Uh, Scotty, thank you.